Shalom, beloved. A word. Some of us are in fire. Yes, beloved. Some of our experiences, some of our pain, some of our trials and tribulations have put us in the fire. And we don't always understand why. We can't always reason why we are in the fire, beloved. Our life circumstances, our isolation, our tribes. Many times the people that should support us are some of our worst adversaries. And many times they come from our own families. They come through rivalries. They come through disappointments. They come through being the exact opposite of everything we are. So much so it can make us feel like we failed in what we're doing. Some of us can go through it with our children. We have done everything in our power to follow what Yah told us. Everything in our power. And yet, having walked with Yah, talked with Yah, teaching our children the way that they should go, that they might not turn away from it when they grow older. We look at Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 8. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. And the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. And they were judges in Beersheba. But his son walked not in his ways. They didn't walk in his ways. They walked after money and took bribes and perverted judgment. They were called the sons of Bilal. The sons of Bilal. What does Bilal mean? We read it in scripture. Is used to characterize the wicked or worthless. They are lacking worth, the wicked or worthless sons of Bilal. This is Samuel, this powerful, powerful prophet, this seer that Yah himself walks with, talks with. He is the one that comes in after Eli and yet his sons are so worthless that the people start hollering. They want a king. They want a king. Many of us, beloved, following the ways of Yah, we do not read anywhere in there that Samuel, unlike Eli, who didn't try to straighten his children out, we don't read that Samuel didn't try to guide his sons. What we read is that no matter what he seemingly had done, they were sons of Bilal, although they were Samuel's fleshly sons. Many of us, beloved, are we in the firmness because we have children that have decided to go their own way. They turn on us, and we've done our best. <clears throat> Many of us have siblings that become our greatest rivals. They will do everything in their power to usurp us. They will work against us. They will turn our children against us. They will speak against us. They will listen to us talk, put down every idea, every goal, every intent as though it's worthless and then run in front of you and try to do the exact thing you said you were doing, doing and claim all the glory. They will take the words you spoke, flip it. And when they speak to another, they'll speak your words as though they're their words and take their words and afford them to you and take your character and rip it to shreds in the eyes of others. You know, many of us, when we're chosen, think that it's a blessed thing. It is blessed once this life is over. Is there blessings in this life? Yes, it is. But we shall have persecutions, trials, and tribulations. Even Yeshua HaMashiach's brothers, don't hide yourself. Go up, go up so that you can be seen. You know, they're, they're disregarding him. Okay, they did not recognize with all that he was doing who he was. We've got siblings. We've got 
in some cases, parents, we've got siblings that will literally put us to death. We've got children that will turn and try to do the same. How do we know that Absalom did it to David? We've Absalom tried to go at David. David still loved Absalom. But Absalom was going hard against David. He wanted everything his father had, including his kingdom. That furnace, beloved, that furnace, that furnace that draws tears in your eyes, be it by the night on your pillow or by the day in your solitude. When you have to act as though something's in your eye or you turn away because your heart is stricken. Something. When we look at Reuben, when we look at Reuben, one of the sons of Jacob, here is Reuben. He has 11 brothers. 11 brothers. His youngest brother hasn't long been born because if we look in Genesis 35, verse 22, and it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went in and lay with Bilhah his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12. He did this at, after the death of Rachel. Rachel had died giving birth to Benjamin. And then Reuben, in the midst of this, goes in and lays with his father's concubine, who had been Rachel's handmaid. Why? Because there was a power shift going on. There was a power shift going on. In our lives, we see power shifts. We see where one who thought they were second now at the death of mommy, now at the death of daddy, now at the death of your husband, now at the death of your wife, now maybe at your own death. They're going in and trying to grab power. Power sometimes are possessions. Power other times are positioning. When a parent dies, even though y'all all good and grown, they want power. They want position. So I have to go in and mar so that the one that might rise up, who's that? Bilhah was Rachel's handmaid. Rachel was the favorite wife. She was the one Jacob had wanted to marry, although he ended up with Leah. Now, in Reuben's mind, maybe there's the possibility that daddy's going to pick Bilhah because she was with Rachel, whom he favored over Reuben's mother, Leah. You know, one of the things it doesn't really expound on while we look at what Reuben did, and Jacob heard it. Jacob knew about it. He heard about what Reuben did, and Yah went after Reuben. Jacob had to pray for him, but see, there's another dynamic a lot of people don't even consider. Dan and Nephitali. Dan and Nephitali. Let me get it right. Yes, yes, yes. Bilhah had given birth to Dan and Nephitali. So if the word came out that <clears throat> Reuben slept with Bilhah, Dan and Nephitali are also recognizing you just took our mother's name and threw it down in the mud. Daddy's not going to lay with her anymore. She cannot raise up to prominence. No, 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 no. Dan and Nephitali have to walk around knowing Reuben, our brother, slept with our mother and disgraced her. She can never hold her head up behind what he did. This is in the household that this is going on. But we'll continue, beloved. We're looking at these brothers when we when we're going through all these changes and people aren't reading between the lines because the scripture tells you, but many of us don't look deeper at it. Dan and Nephitali are amongst Jacob's 12 sons that Reuben slept with their mom and disgraced her. So we don't know how the brothers are feeling at this point, but I don't think it's good towards Reuben. This is right after Rachel dies, giving birth to Benjamin. We know that just because you're the son or daughter of a prominent person doesn't necessitate the fact that 
they're going to have the same spirit and same quality as the parent. Although many people, they'll try to hold you to the standard of your parent. What if your parent was no good and you are blessed? You are chosen. You are truly one of y'all's own. But they try to put what your daddy did or what your mama did on you and try to make you walk it and talk it and live it and breathe it. Or you weren't mommy's favorite. You weren't daddy's favorite. You were the one we talked about, walked all over, treated like trash, and yet you're chosen of y'all. When we look at those 12 brothers and we put them all together, we remember how When they were selling Joseph, Joseph into slavery, you have to think about it. Here are 10 of the brothers, 10 of them. They first thought to take Joseph and kill him. But then it was Judah who said, no, let's throw him in a pit. Reuben thought, to get him away from him, told him to throw him in the pit. They were still thinking about killing him when Judah said, no, let's not kill him and have his blood on our hands. Let's sell him off. Let's sell him off. Reuben returns. He's looking for Joseph because Reuben was going to try to give Joseph back, but it's too late. Joseph has the honor of a firstborn child. He is loved by Jacob. Reuben lost his honor when he slept with Bilhah. But all 10 are confederate, or all nine, because Reuben came back after they sold him. All nine are confederate to sell him away, to sell him away. And then they do so. All 10 take Joseph's coat and go back to dad and lie and say, he'd been torn by a wild animal. You know, to get 10 people in agreement, to get 10 people to hold their peace, watching their father grieve is a hard thing. And yet that's exactly what they did while their brother is catching it, being taken away and sold to Israelites. We sitting in that furnace, beloved, that furnace, that furnace, that furnace. You see, Joseph was in the furnace. Some of us have been in that furnace since we were little. Some of us are put in that furnace by our siblings, and the irony, the sickness, the twisted part of it is many people think, well, all of them wouldn't lie on you. I don't believe all of them lied on you. I mean, it was your sister and your two brothers. Why not? Why not? All 10 sons were in agreement when they went back to Jacob that Joseph was dead. It was all 10. Benjamin's still PB. He can't even get in on it at the time. It was all 10 of them that were in agreement. And they kept that agreement. They kept it. Not one of them within their first year, not one of them's heart was stricken with love to say, wait a minute, they taking our brother away and change. Yes, I know he's a pain in the butt, but so are you. You didn't see Dan and Nephitali rise up and say, wait a minute, Ruben, we got a beef with you too. You didn't see that. Because you see, when you're chosen and they see that light, they see that favoring, there's a hatred. You see, sometimes you don't have to be favored by the parent like Joseph was. Mm -mm. Isaac favored Esau. But y'all hated Esau, love Jacob. Isaac himself was picked on by his own brother, Ishmael. Isaac knew what it was like to live in discord at some point in his life. He knew. And he knew how Esau was. But that was his favor. And just because your parent favors doesn't mean God favors. And some of us are sitting in that furnace, feeling solitary, feeling misunderstood, feeling lied on, feeling mistreated. Not only, it can be our children. Look at Samuel with his two sons. They were the sons of Belial, worthless. Some of them are our siblings. 
you got discord going on in the house of Jacob because Laban played a trick and gave Leah instead of Rachel and discord is going on. But that wasn't the only sibling set in that house. No, it wasn't. You see, when we look at the book of Jubilees, when we look at the book of Jubilees, what was going on in Jacob's house? The favored one. Just so we see, I want to move me out of the way so you can see it. Forgive me, I'm trying to shrink you. We're in the book of Jubilees, chapter 28, verse 9. And on the day when the seven days of the feast of Leah had passed, Laban gave Rachel to Jacob that he might serve him another seven years. And he gave Rachel Bilhah, the sister of Zilpah, as a handmaid. So, Rachel and Leah were sisters, but so were Bilhah and Zilpah. You got discord in that house. You got discord in that house. The trick created a trap of problems. So when we look at it, you're looking at brothers that are cousins, that are all of this discord. How do we know this was not something that should have come about this way. When we look at the book of Leviticus, this is after the 12 tribes are put together. Chapter 18, verse 18. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Now, if one of the sisters dies, you can marry the other, but not at the same time. Not at the intentional same time. The, the discord, you have siblings, one vexing the other. You look at these brothers, you look at these sisters. Leah felt hated, and Yah recognized that he gave her six sons and one daughter, Dinah. Then the two handmaids are having sons, Zilpah and Bilhah. Finally, Rachel starts having children. But her last child, she lost her life. You see, beloved, when we are in that furnace, Lord have mercy when we're in the furnace, beloved. There are things that can be going on that make us feel isolated. But that is not the end of the matter. It is during that time in the furnace that Yah isolates us and takes us unto himself to create us and to bring us up and to have us do a work that without that experience, without that understanding, we can't be a blessing to others. We can't build up the body. If I don't, if I've never experienced pain, how can I help the pain of others? In this life, whether you are a person working for Yah and you're doing everything right, like Samuel, and you end up with sons or daughters of Bilal, it is a very disappointing thing. And yet, that's what you see happen with Samuel and his sons. When you look at Joseph, yes, in the end, Joseph rose high, but in his heart, all ten of oh, my brothers. Even if Reuben wasn't there when it happened, nobody opened their mouth. Nobody said, get the horses, hurry up, let's run. We got time to catch up with them. It's our brother. Nobody. Not to mention they were willing to watch their father grieve for him. And none of them opened their mouth because they were confederate. None of them had a secondary meeting to gather around. Uh-uh, we got to change this thing. He are broke. It ain't about me keeping my word to you. I have a blood bond to my brother. I can't just leave him out there to the who knows where and the who knows what. But that's exactly what happened, beloved. And when people try to lie and say, or they get very short-sighted, they have no insight and say, well, why would? All of your brothers and sisters lie on you. Look at what they did to Joseph. The only one that wouldn't lie was the only one that couldn't lie because he was too young and didn't know. And that was Benjamin. 
I say that, beloved, because that furnace, that furnace is some wicked heat. Some of us, our name has been torn down so greatly, so greatly, be it a parent that doesn't do what they should have done for us, be it a sibling, be it our own child. The blessing doesn't change. The blessing doesn't change. And when you look at Abraham, Abraham had to get himself up and leave. He didn't take his daddy with him. No, he did. Mm -mm. His brother wasn't with him. He took his nephew. And that became problems in time because Lot went, picked the best land. He went down there in Sodom and Gomorrah and all hell broke loose. And you are not alone. And there, even when Yeshua HaMashiach said it best, when they told him, your mother and your brother are outside, they trying to get in. He said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Those that follow Yah. And the end of the matter is always greater than the beginning. Below. It's always greater. Sitting in this furnace, recognizing that all you have done for your children. Some of them will walk away like you were never their parent. Some of them are so greedy. Sons and daughters of the loud. They give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the more you give them, the more they say, give me more. And if you're looking for true thank yous, you better look somewhere else because it's not coming from them. When you look at, I taught you better than this and you're not seeing it. Remember Samuel. Samuel didn't have the story of Eli. When you think about people being ungrateful, there was a point before Sarah got pregnant that Hagar, she despised Sarah. She went from a lowly position, Hagar, to just having Abraham's son. Suddenly, Sarah looked like nothing in her. But the blessing was guaranteed. And that's the part that they didn't understand. And the same people that they had turned on. When you think about it, Ishmael, he was a good 13 years old. When he got circumcised, they didn't send Ishmael away when he was just a little baby. He wasn't just a little bit baby. Ishmael was old enough. He started teasing Isaac. You got a lot of elder brothers and sisters that do. And the younger could be loving the older. It don't matter. It don't matter. But the end of the matter, beloved, there's blessing at the end. And it's very hard to see that blessing when you're in the furnace. That's why the fire is behind me. That furnace, that furnace of isolation, that furnace of solitude, that furnace of feeling misunderstood and unloved, unsupported, if you will, while still maintaining the truth of who you are and who you belong to. Yes, beloved, that furnace. But if you look around in the flame, you might see some brothers and sisters Staring back at you, they just in a space because y'all isolates us to bring out the best in us. So if you've got children of Balaam, you're not alone. If you got siblings, male and female, that are going at your neck, you're not alone. Mm -mm. If you have nieces, nephews, sons, and daughters that are coming up against you. Reuben wanted his mother to be first. You know, we look at Levi. Levi, Levi was the head of the priesthood. But Levi was confederate when they sent Joseph away. They were confederate in Judah, the tribe from whence we come. He told them, let's sell them off. They didn't, he didn't want to kill them, but it's like, didn't your heart prick you at any point in time? Well, doesn't seem to be the case. They didn't know anything about Joseph until they get to Egypt. 
till they get the ease. You don't hear anywhere in between where we got to get together and go look for our brother. We ain't got to tell daddy, but we go look for him. You don't hear that. But Yah is in the background working. What they meant for evil, Yah turned into good. And that's what I'm telling you. This thing can go on for a long time. In many cases, many of us, we didn't set in that fire for a long, long, long time. Where the brother that we thought should have loved us don't love us. Because you got a gift. Because you got sight. Because you got a blessing. Because you are a blessing. Because your tongue is blessed and anointed. No, 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 no. They hate you because of it. They can't even speak peaceably to you because of it. But it doesn't change the blessing. No, it doesn't. I put this up here, beloved, because some of us, we in the furnace. And the irony is some of the people who lit the fire are family who share the same blood type. Their sisters, their brothers, their whole groups of siblings, their parents, their elders that have become confederate. Their children that you raised from the moment before they could hold their head up. And they threw that wood on that fire. They, they put you in the fire. They put you in the fire. Samuel was blessed. It doesn't show where his sons turned before his death. Samuel was getting old, and he knew he would be gone soon. But his sons were not the men he was. You are not alone, and there is a blessing at the end of the matter. Yah allows what the devil means for our bad. Yah uses for our good so that we can be a blessing. He blesses those that bless us and curses those that curse us. Even after they came to Egypt, Joseph's brothers, when their father died, they figured now he's going to take revenge. But Joseph was a better man. He was a better man. Many of them in all those years never once, never tried to find him and to agree to never say a word in that first year, 10 people, grown people. And now one of them looking at each other like, Whew. can you imagine? Here come dad, he is broke up. He won't let Benjamin out of his sight. Many people will say, well, Joseph was his favorite, but not Benjamin. Benjamin, although Joseph loved him, Benjamin was born and his mother died. So I'm sure he loved this baby, but you were there and some people might even concede the cause, cause and effect of your mother's death, but I love you. Joseph was that child, that one child, that when he looked at Rachel before he ever got married, that's the one I want, that's the one I love. When I dream of a family, she's the mother of my children, which makes Joseph in his heart firstborn. Not Reuben. Reuben should have never existed had LeBron not done what he did. In the eyes of how Jacob would have seen him. Not to say he didn't love his son. But Rachel was not, Leah was never chosen to be the wife. It was trickery. Yes, beloved, we got people out here and they got blood ties or they're close to family that they are doing dirt. They are doing dirt. Anytime Reuben could lay with his father's wife, and let's keep it going, his brother Dan and Nefertali's mama know he's bringing disgrace on their mother. Oh, no. Do not be shocked at this fiery trial that comes upon you as though something strange happen to you. This is Peter's words, that fiery trial. Oh, it's been some fiery trials and you are not alone. You are not alone. Can you imagine how Bill Bilhah felt? She wasn't in agreement with it. 
I watch you born from a little boy. And now I got to run around here to scrape behind you. You are not alone, beloved. No, you may feel alone and isolated. Your end shall be far greater than your beginning. It is a word, beloved. Be encouraged and know for certainty. God is with you. Blessed are you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Know it, beloved. And you are not alone, although you may feel alone. And when you get isolated, he's burning away all of that unnecessary stuff. He'll cleanse your spirit. He'll cleanse your mind as well as your body. Be encouraged. It's a word. Shalom.